Hello, my name is Rusuiro Kadzombe, founding member of NICTAS Institute Foundation and CEO. NICTAS Institute Foundation is a non-governmental organization organically grown in Malawi. NICTAS Institute Foundation is a youth-friendly organization. I established NICTAS Institute Foundation after I lost the only child, the only son, to suicide. I never knew that my son was harboring suicidal thoughts. After experiencing this, I thought it, and with the increasing numbers of suicides that have been happening the past two years, I decided to say, let NIF go out there and help out young people and families that are facing the same situation that I faced. So NICTAS Institute Foundation has a project that is going on called mitigating the incidence of suicide in adolescents and providing livelihood opportunities in young people. NICTAS Institute Foundation is piloting its project in two districts, Doha and Lilongwe. Doha specifically, there is a marginalized community, Zareka refugee camp. And here in Lilongwe as well, it's got its marginalized community in the child-headed homes. Child-headed homes are the homes that are headed by young people from the age of 16 to 24. So those are the communities that we are saving for the meantime with NIF. Now I'm going to take you to Zaleka refugee camp, one of the marginalized communities that NIF is saving. Let's experience their life, their warfare, and see what is making them to be depressed or what is making them to have suicidal thoughts. in Zaleka camp to experience the life that is here that is making the young people not to cope up with the situations that are here that is bringing depression and the end result of depression it goes into suicide and sometimes they end up into drugs. There is Kawalewan. In Kawalewan I've got a friend that I'm going to interview as well the one who is in Nictas Institute Foundation. So stay tuned follow me where I'm going and you're going to see my friend who is in Nictas Institute Foundation. Jean Claude is one of the members of uh, Nictas Institute Foundation. Uh, this boy, uh, he dropped out of school. And when he met uh, me as his psychotherapist, we had some counseling sessions. I helped him out and he, he's back again into school. And he, he wants to make sure that he has uh, upgraded into his school and for a good cause of his family. So I'm going to have an interview with him. Stay tuned. What is your name? Yeah, my name is Parahidwa Jean Crowd. Okay. Um, what has been your life here in the camp? My life was very difficult and hard to understand since I, I reached here in the camp. I am residing with my mother and we are meeting a lot of challenges and problems. And that's made me to reach the situation of start bad companies, drugs, alcohol, so many things that were making me to be out of school. Okay. Uh, what actually made you to change your lifestyle after you met NIF? Just because of the counselings of Miss Los Willow and John, it's what used to encourage me to go back in school. And since I started making the new situations, is when I saw that something can be easy to me to do because I saw that education is something important. Apart from everything I can do, but I need to first of all keep schooling then it can be good for me. 
All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you that we have seen where you're, you're staying. You can see how the conditions are in here in Zaleka. Uh, they are not conducive to young people to adapt this situation. They are coming from homes where they were okay and now they are here. So to adapt the situation that is here in the camp, some of the young people, they are failing to adapt the situations and they engage themselves into drugs. Some of them, they are engaging themselves into alcohol. But at the end of the day, most of them, they will be depressed. And when they are depressed, some of them who cannot catch up with everything else that is happening here, we are getting cases of they are harboring the suicidal thoughts. And some of them, we're getting cases of suicide. So do the help of a cause where you can donate something else that we are going to help these young people so that we can better their lives. This is a place um, called the Transit. Transit is a place where refugees, when they, are, they, are, they come in here in Zalega, it's their first place where they, they, are, they are lodged in. And from the, here, it's where they are going to be uh, allocated to different cohorts. I'm here to experience the life that the young people are experiencing when they reach here in uh, Zalega refugee camp. So we're going to go around where the places they sleep, what they do at night and whatever they do the activities at night. I'm here for a sleepover and to experience what the young people experience here in Zaleka. Stay on and follow us. As you can see, this is the transit. Um, the transit here uh, it's for the families, but actually they are young people. Most of the families that are here, they are young people. So the young people that are staying here, they are the adolescents that they are having troubles to cope up with the situation that is here in the camp. So I'm here sleeping over just to experience what these young people are having here. My room tonight is going to be here. Hello. Yes. For the meantime, this is going to be my room. This is one of the room. What's your name? She's going to be my partner tonight. And I've got another girl who is here that is going to to be asked about the life here in the camp. My friend here, we can talk English and translate probably, but there, there are a lot of languages that are spoken here in Zaleka. So, uh, my friend here, she's going to introduce herself. She knows English, so we are going to be able to interact in English. What is your name, my friend? Um, hello, my name is Jeanette. I am from DRC. I am 20 years old. Mm -hmm. All right, when did you come here in Zaleka? I came here three years ago. Uh, can you tell me what has been your life here in Italica camp? As a young people, as maybe a youth, what has been your life lately? Um, my life in the camp, um, I can say it's not easy. Yeah, I'm not complaining that much, but what I can say is that it's not that easy, especially when we came here, when we moved here in the camp, of course. Um, um, the, the biggest challenge that we had, first of all, it was uh, where to stay, then the food, and then the people around, because we have different languages in the camp and different nationalities. So um, when we came, like especially me with my family, where I was, we, we were living with people from uh, Rwanda and Burundi, and then people from Somalia, we couldn't get each other. But then the life was, wasn't um, what we were expecting, okay. especially from uh, the food, school, the clothes, and those stuff. So it, it wasn't easy, and it's not easy, but at least we are trying to get used. All right. Um, you've told me that your life has not been easy, and you've faced a lot of challenges. Education-wise, are you able to meet whatever you are expecting to have, or 
Was your life there where you were and here? Which one was the life that is better? And how are you going to make yourself to be a better youth, even that you're passing through the challenges? Uh, first of all, the life I had before coming here was way more better than this one. Because, um, especially for me, I'm, I'm, of, I'm an orphan. I don't have parents here, but I used to have my parents back in DRC. So that life that I had there was better than this one because I, I could go to uh, good schools, I could have food, clothes. But when I moved here with my brothers and sisters, we had to take care of each other by our own. And yeah, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm trying, like I'm going to school. Mm. It's been three years now. Mm. Like next year I'll write the money book examination. Mm -hmm. And after that, I'll try to go to university if I'll have the opportunity. So we're just trying to do our best in the camp. Okay, what can be your advice to your fellow young people? that are here in the camp that are failing to cope up with the situation or maybe those ones that have put themselves into drugs or maybe those ones that maybe that have gone into depression. What can be to your what can be your advice to those people? Uh, my advice to those people is just they I can tell them to try their best to be positive. Like I have my own example when I came and then the life was hard. Mm -hmm. By first, I started trying. Like uh, uh, back in DRC, I didn't. I was not taking drugs and alcohol. Mm. But when the life became difficult here, mm. I tried alcohol. I started taking alcohol because of the depression, um, and then I could not like understand what was going on because my life was just. It became bad. So I started alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. But at the end of the day, I realized that I was not, um, nothing was going better. I was just making it worse. So I stopped. I started going to school. I started going to church, going to the library, reading books, mm. trying to be more, you know. Positive. Yeah, positive. So since I started, since I took that decision to be positive about everything in the camp, everything is now working fine. Okay. I'm having opportunities that I didn't have when I was taking alcohol. So just stop and try to be positive. Everything will be all right. Thank you very much for your positivity. And what I can advise you is continue to be positive. If you continue to be positive in life, there's always going to be a brighter future ahead of you. Do not give up because you've already been experiencing depression. Depression is real to young people and depression can kill. And depression can bring suicide to the young people. So I thank you very much for being positive about your life and doing what is best for you. Thank, thank you. Uh, as I already said that I'm going to have a sleep over here. Uh, this is the place that I'm going to sleep. I'm going to experience where my friend who has accommodated me, that's where I'm going to spend my night. So I'm going to get in. This is where I'm going to spend my night. Um, for this night, this is going to be my experience in the camp. It is for a good cause. Today, Pascaline has provided me with a, a place where I can sleep. So, my friend tonight is Pascaline. So, good night. This is my place. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>
did. I think I had it uh, a good night. Yeah. It's time that I should go home. I thank you very much for being with me. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Yes. We'll come again. Okay, okay. Hey, what a night. <laughs> a peaceful night but uh, uncomfortable as you can see the environment where young people are being exposed it's not a better place thank you very much for accommodating me it is nice being here thank you for your support you. i don't take it for granted and my team doesn't take it for granted you. we'll come back for you thank you so much thank you, thank thank you very you. much for everybody else who has been here helping me out to spend the night in the camp to spend the sleepover in the camp. We have celebrated what we wanted to celebrate, but at the end of it all, we wanted to show the people the real camp, the real issues in the camp, the real ground that we're trying to tackle. Thank you so much. I'm going to introduce you to my comfortable zone. My comfortable zone has got everything else that it's above human basic needs. It's got electricity, running water 24-7. It's got workers all over. I've got a comfortable room. Even where I sleep, it's very comfortable. But at the end of the day, what is it all about all this? When someone else in Zaleka, their warfare is not being met. After the experience of young people going to Zaleka, the NIF team, the experience was very horrific. The young people are just inactive. The young people are living in homes that are not even conducive to themselves. After having their comfortable zone in their own country, but here they are displaced and having homes that are not conducive. These are some of the things that young people who are in Zaleka, even not in Zaleka as well, those that are in homes that are less privileged homes, young people, they harbor a lot of suicidal thoughts. Being inactive in their ways, they'll do something else that is bad and they can end up having suicidal thoughts and getting themselves into drugs. Yes, they've got skills, but they can't do anything with their skills because they don't have any support. Yes, they've got everything else that it needs. Yes, they are educated, but they can't go anywhere. So, what is the cause of me having in a comfortable zone? Whilst young people that we call them, they are our future generation. What is it that me, I should be staying in a comfortable zone like this without helping the young people? Sometimes we take ourselves to the hotels over the weekend just to spend a weekend out where we spend our rooms 75,000 kwacha to 100,000 kwacha. If it's two nights, Saturday and Sunday, it will be 200,000 kwacha. Donate for a good cause. Young people, they need us. They need us to help them with their skills so that they can empower themselves. They are our future generation. Put yourself into the shoes of these young people. Donate for a good cause and NIF team is going to do your work whilst you're at home. Spare one weekend and donate for a good cause. I will appreciate very much if you donate for these young people who are harboring suicidal thoughts, if we are going to help them with their skills because they are just wandering around and doing nothing. Remember, an idle mind keeps a lot of things. Please donate for a good cause. I will appreciate a knife team.